Starting from A, this is our recycling center. 221 Recycling Center. We buy scrap metals. Cars currently going $6 a hundred pound. Towing and roll off containers available at demand or at your request. This is the main entrance from the road. Normally we've never walked it, but you have seen it from the other side. Over here is where Tim works in the office. Things we don't accept, even though for some reason we still end up getting some of these things in. Up here is where you take your way ticket. Once you get it printed off from the scale, whatever you have, you come up here and you give it to Tim. Hey, Tim. We're doing a start to finish walkthrough. I was just explaining to them how it works on your side. Yeah. Yeah. Let's get the ticket. about it. Yeah, all his work happens. Merry little way. Over there. That's pretty much it. Yep. We're going to continue on the tour then. The gate opens in two parts. The roll off side and then the side behind me that latches. Parking is supposed to be up through here, but a lot of people don't seem to mind that sign. And here is the upper level garage area. This is where certain good cars come to hang around like the uh, 05 Pontiac that's about to get an engine swap. We don't actually do a whole lot of work out of here. It's more or less just storage. More shelving, storage. There's the back door to go in where Tim works. Down these stairs down here, we have the basement level. And we'll walk down here for a second. This is where all your precious metals like copper and brass and stuff come. Uh, radiators, aluminum. And this is where it all gets sorted between all of these bins and we ship them out once, to, once or twice a week. Battery is another source of precious metals. Compressors. And this is the waste scale that when you back your car down into here, we take your metal and stuff, we weigh it on the scale and print your ticket up here accordingly. You print it on a ticket like this, 221 Recycling Center, and then here's all the list of metals that you can have, starting with Bear Bright and ending with White Goods. The only thing that is not listed on here is dirty aluminum, which if we, um, I'm sorry, dirty brass. So if something like that comes in, you have to write that across the bottom. You add up what all they have according to their weight, which prints from this Epson printer on this section. And then we date it down here. You get their name and vehicle number and tag number, or vehicle and tag number. Their weights are in here. We make it all simple and we add up all their weights into the boxes according to what they have. And then they take this whole copy upstairs to Tim, who's up there. Tim takes it, scans it with their ID. They get to keep the yellow copy and they get their money. The white copy goes into our file. So, In each of these containers, there's things like copper, assorted wire, copper wire, one, two, three, clean three, or clean copper number two and clean copper number one, insulated copper, one, two, and three, and it all gets sorted here. Some more radiators. 
We accept condensers too, along with air conditioning units. We're kind of short staffed, in case you don't notice. That's why this place is kind of messy. In fact, it's, it's very messy, um, but we're just doing the best we can. Batteries of all assortments. Some batteries, we or the batteries and stuff we test before we send them back out. Um, because in some instances, the batteries can be reused and we can recycle them in a different method. For example, uh, recharging them and selling them at a discounted rate. Out here, y'all have seen the video where the cans, uh, they get crushed into bricks, which we don't have any sitting here. Normally we have some piles, but we just sent out a container of uh, cans not long ago. Bags of cans, bags that people bring their cans in with have to be removed and we pile up the bags here and they're a plastic type recyclable. This is more general scrap, um, radiators and aluminum, things of that nature. This stuff gets dropped into a bin like that. I do not know if this one has any cans in it right now or not. Looks like it has a small amount, so we'll see if we can. Yep. But we fill that up and send it out. And we send it out using our trusty Mac roll off truck. Cars, well, anybody uh, scrapping metal comes in and comes along this scale where they get their weight right there. And then it's printed on a ticket here. You print the ticket right down the vehicle and you file it right there until they come back across. You subtract the difference with the weight and that's how much they had. For example, there's a Dodge Ram pickup truck out there who's unloading scrap metal as we speak. When he pulls away, we'll go down there and see what all he jumped. Wheels and tires, rims specifically, aluminum and steel, get saved. Those are another source of recyclable metal. Tires, while harder to recycle than others, come here where they get broken down. And here's our assortment of tires. Tires, when in good condition, will actually be resold to the public um, if you need cheap tires. We'll sell them at a, a very discounted price. Some tires better than others. Tires range between five and fifteen dollars at most. You have to uh, really compete with used tire shops, but that's another good thing is there's a used tire place up the street here, and they usually come down a few times a week, and we'll go through our entire assortment of tires to find the best ones. They'll buy literally a truck and trailer load of tires, and we'll sell them to them for a couple dollars to five dollars a piece because they buy them in bulk. So that's where used tire shops in our area get their tires. Because you wouldn't believe how many cars come in here that still have good rubber on them. A lot of times, cars, uh, the engines blow up in them right after something has been done. For example, they may have just put new tires on it two months ago and then the engine throws a rod. While that's terrible that it happens to people like that, it does quite frequently. Over here is uh, engines assortment. These engines are usually the ones that are removed in not the uh, happiest of way. Normally they are ripped from the engine. Um, and here they are undressed as best they can. Alternators, starters, things of that nature to be recycled later on. Engines go out in a container all their own on the other side they get shipped out uh, once a month or so. 
Because once again, we have gotten where we save a lot of cars. If you would have came here three years ago, most of this would have been nothing but, but field. We didn't actually use any of this area. It was all just field. But since we've started saving cars, more people come in here looking for parts, which means more money for the recycling center. Over here is where they drop washing machines. We, being the, the closest recycling yard to downtown, um, a bunch of the furniture stores in Chesney have um, trade-in uh, trade in washing machines and scratching dents that can't be resold. So they come here That's where dad comes in and he is stripping them of their copper for the gold, for the gold. While it's not a big Or a large amount of money. It does add up and it is worth saving when it's all said and done And sometimes you find money. Yep. Mostly dryers. Most. The motors inside washing machines and dryers have a lot of precious copper in them. So when you add all this up, it's worth saving. Someone has not cleaned out that one in a while. We have another guy who comes in uh, <coughs> once a month or so and buys out all of our bicycles that we get in for scrap. He donates them to a charity um, that reconditions them and gives them away for to children uh, around Christmas time and stuff um, who can't afford stuff like that. So we save all of the bicycles and, uh, and he'll come pick them up. And like I said, they take them and uh, they'll recondition them and clean them all up and make them look nice and give them away to, to kids who might not get anything. This is usually where the bucket loader sits the one with the tracks on it that's all broken down it usually sits right here and the semi trucks when they load up they back down this side over here into this little gully area and the loader sits here and he picks up scrap from the pile and drops it into the um, tractor trailer container on the back of the truck This is all the general shredded steel that comes in. There's a concrete slab that we're actually standing on. And when you bring in your own scrap metal, you dump it onto this concrete slab. And we use the bobcat to come out here and push the pile up from the edge of the concrete slab here, push it and compress the pile. When the truck comes, the semi truck backs up there and the loader backs up here and they pick it up and crunch it and drop it into the uh, container. Old Honda Civic hubcap. Head gaskets, grills. This has got too much glass in it to be left here. So we will move this. There's an alternator. We have to come through here every now and then and organize the um, and we have to organize and sort through to see if we're missing any stuff like alternators. They can't be left in the pile because they are worth more to be recycled as metal than they are to be recycled as shredded steel. 
But there's the strip pile. Like I said, all this is a concrete slab from their back. So people, for example, like the guy in the Dodge Ram, will back up, dump whatever he had to dump, and then he goes and reweighs himself back across the scale, and they get a uh, weight according to that. Our magnet is still broken. It doesn't really work worth a damn, so it doesn't get used. This is miscellaneous insulation sheets that we are recycling. Um, we actually sold quite a few of those not too terribly long ago. There's the big man himself. Randy is the brains of this whole operation. He runs this whole show. pretty much the majority of it. As I mentioned, cars get brought up over here, and if they're not really worth saving, they get recycled. Some things will, we will hang on to longer than others. Um, I still have to do a video on the school bus for somebody. I'll get to that. And all this is going to get cleaned out now that we're in the first of the new year. Um, and summer's coming around, the weather's getting warmer, which means the ground's softening up and we can dig all this out. And we're going to be um, cleaning this entire area through here. While it looks like a landfill, it is not. Um, they're going to come out and, and dig all of this out and uh, clean it. Um, it will all get shipped out to be sorted. And then the normal out through the back 40 and stuff down through there all around the other side it's just where we stack cars so this is pretty much the gist of the recycling center while i know it's not entirely a, a designated car related video i hope that you now get a better understanding of what goes on here we're not technically a junkyard. I even know that I label some of my videos junkyard and so and so, but um, it's a more catchy title and scrapyard or recycling center doesn't always run off the tongue as easy. Weird color on that guy. This is the uh, Hitachi loader. No, this is the Hyundai loader. Sorry. Uh, it is getting a, uh, a new engine put in it. We, uh, Eddie, one of our previous employees, blew the engine in it. Here is an assortment of lawnmowers that are for sale for parts or to be used. And then here is containers of um, aluminum wheels and stuff that are ready to be shipped out. Steel wheels, of course, over there too. Those get taken off periodically. We also will sell sets of rims out of here if you find a set you like. Dig them out before they get gone. I found this awesome little mini ammo can the other day in the pile. 240 cartridges. Tracer M62s. This was laying out there. So I grabbed that. Still has a rubber seal in the top of it. It's smaller than my other one and that's what I liked about it. But yeah so that's pretty much the ins and the outs of the recycling center 
I hope you guys enjoyed. If you want to see anything else more in depth, I will try. I know if somebody wanted to see cars getting processed from start to finish. Um, so when I, uh, when I get some time and we get a car in here, I'll film it from the minute that it rolls through the gate all the way to its final destination where it gets pounded into the ground and sent off on a uh, flatbed or a semi truck. Tractor trailer, there we go. It's a, uh, it's not a very long process. The majority of it is fluid drainage and stuff right here, not into the ground. I mean, we have containers to catch it and store it until it can be picked up. Um, I know in a couple of my other videos when we crushed a couple cars, a few of them did leak fluids onto the ground. That's not very normal um, in this case. Uh, what happened was we were out of metal in the pile to be scrapped, and so we started pulling cars that we had stacked over here to load up the truck. We had to get that money. They pay us for that kind of stuff, uh, and we needed that money right then. So we didn't have time to wait, to, and uh, we didn't know which ones had been processed or not, so we were just sending them all. And that happens sometimes, but... Uh, we're gonna end this video here. Thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed. Hopefully this wasn't too boring. 20 minutes of behind the scenes or how it's made or how it's done um, at uh, 221 Recycling Center. Thanks for watching, subscribe if you haven't already and uh, we'll go back to uh, normal car stuff very soon. Um, probably like after this video uploads. I just wanted to get that out there to clarify with everybody we have new subscribers we have old subscribers and uh we're not a junkyard it's a metal recycling plant but that's that's what makes it so awful because cars a junkyard might pay to four hundred dollars or so for a car like a lkq or something would um, but however to us it's only worth what it weighs like the Saab that was probably a hundred and twenty dollar car that's probably what we paid for it. I'm sure you could probably salvage the engine for that. It's got aluminum wheels on it. Probably still has a catalytic converter. The Chrysler Pacifica, once again, that one's a little heavier. That thing probably weighed out at about $150. Looks like it needs a bumper. Probably a little bit of work, mechanically, I'm sure, because it's Chrysler. But the school bus probably didn't weigh out at about $220 or so. Maybe $240, depending. Someone wants to see a video on this school bus. Give you a hint. This one's diesel. Alright guys, thanks for watching. Drop a comment down below. Let us know what you think. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. I'm rambling at this point. We will see you in the next one. David, tell him bye. Hello, you tell him bye. Bye. There you go.